Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and kind of do like a live first impressions uh, of the Scion Ascendancy changes. Uh, it's coming for a 3.0 and potentially even the beta. So I will see that here in a minute while we read through this. So, in the upcoming 3.0.0 beta, the Ascendant Scion Ascendancy class will undergo some significant changes that focus on making the class more powerful and on par with other classes. We've done this by taking some of the more uh, build-defining features from the other 18 Ascendancy classes and incorporating them on the Ascendant Tree. Almost the entire Ascendant Tree has changed with defining features of other Ascendancy, wait, with the defining features of other Ascendancy classes uh, and are able to be paired with each other. This should increase the power of the Ascendant to be more comparable with other classes and enable some previously never be seen, seen before combinations. That's kind of backwards the way they say that though, because they say, so for people who don't know Scion, Scion basically was uh, the jack of no trades and shit at everything. And uh, the reason why is there was pretty much like almost no reason to play a Scion when you could just play a regular Ascendancy. And, you know, a regular Ascendancy would give you a build defining feature like Elementalist is 50% less elemental damage taken. Inquisitor is bypass um, penetration if you crit. Uh, you know, Juggernaut gives you, I don't know, ridiculous amounts of mitigation and cannot be slowed below base movement speed. Raider gives you insane frenzy charge generation and scales on frenzy charges. Everything kind of gave you something. And Scion just gave you a little bit of nothing. That was it before. I don't know what it is now. However, the interesting thing is that they say that uh, with defining features of other Ascendancy classes available to be able to pair with each other. So it's saying that you don't, there's nothing new in here, they're just making it a lot stronger, which doesn't make sense as to why they say never before seen combinations, because it's not like we're getting anything new. We're just getting buffed stuff. Anyway, though, that's not salt. I'm just curious on that. While it's largely the passives changing uh, the path of passives that allow you to start another class tree will also grant two additional passive skills, so players may gain immediate increase to power when taking these points. Okay. So the elementalist is 50% reduced element or reflect taken. So that's that's actually really good already. Because that means you don't have to play an elementalist for Ellie Reflect. Assuming this is your issue. This is actually pretty solid. 50% reduced reflect and damage penetrates 6% element, uh, enemy elemental resistance. I think that's pretty good. With one additional golem, gain elemental conflux for 6 seconds when you kill a rare unique enemy. I think this is pretty solid. The text a little bigger my youtube text um oh you meant this one yeah i was i was waiting to zoom in my bad necromancer gives skill effect duration you and your minions have four percent physical damage reduction you and allies deal 30 percent increased damage while affected by auras you cast you and allies affected by auras have 20 percent chaos res these look pretty okay occultist 20 percent maximum es Looks like a nice CI nerf, Kappa. 1% uh, energy shield regen per second. Enemies you curse have minus 15 chaos res. 20% increased damage you've killed cursed uh, enemy recently. I should probably like pull these up though so we can see exactly what they are, yeah? That'd probably be better as well. Uh, let's just pick... Uh, do I even have a Scion? Do I? I do have a Scion, right? I have a Scion Blade Vortex character. Okay, let's let's look at these side by side so we don't get jubated and think like everything's getting buffed. Look at the Reddit thread. I mean, we got it right here. That's cool. All right, so Necromancer was originally. You and your minions have 4% physical damage reduction, increased effective offering spells. So they changed they changed the increased effective offering spells and made it uh, skill effect duration. First comment, show me the changes. Alright, link me the comments then. We'll go ahead and look at it there. If you guys want me to do that. I don't mind going through like this. So I know it's it's a lot slower for most people, but I'm a patient person. 20% max ES. This didn't really, Occultus like almost never changed. Occultus is like pretty much the exact same. Oh, here we go. All right, all right. So we can actually see them side by side. So nice. Nice team, I like it. Good job, chat. Uh, let me also pull up then the actual changes. 
Okay, next up is Sab. So I just want to see these. 20% chance to create a smoke cloud when you place a mine or throw a trap. Uh, let's see. 5% increased damage for each trap and mine you have. 10% increased movement speed if you place a trap or mine. Traps and mines which have been armed for 4 seconds deal 50% increased damage. It's like kind of okay. Let's see. So Sab is the new movement speed. Traps and mines have been armed deal increased damage. Rip increased cooldown recovery speed for throwing traps. Does that mean they're changing it? Are they removing the cooldown? What's happening to traps? Oh shit! This is a little questionable. I lose penetration though. I'm kind of sad about losing penetration. But I guess for like Poison Blade Fall and you know all the poison shit, they don't want to have penetration there anymore. Okay, Assassin is... Let's see. Um, we got increased critical strike chance. 40% to crit multi against enemies that are on full life. 20% chance to get a power charge on hit against enemies that are on full life. Your critical attacks maim enemies. Alright. That's, that's okay. Trickster. 50% increased recovery rate of life, mana, and energy shield if you've killed an enemy recently. Did Trickster always have? No, it was 30% before. 20% more chance to evade while on full ES. 20% increased damage while not on full ES. 15 mana per second if you use the movement skill recently. That's pretty fucking cool. That's pretty interesting. I like that. That's pretty interesting. I have zero ES, does it work? Uh, it shouldn't, because it says, like, if you're not on full... I don't know, actually. If you're not on full energy shield and you have no energy shield, does that work? I mean, technically, you don't have full energy shield. That's that's also because you don't have any energy shield, so I'm not 100% sure. I never really dipped with those mechanics too much. All right, Pathfinder gets... 10% increased movement speed while using a flash. 50% chance to gain a flash charge when you deal a critical strike. Wow, that's really good. 30% increased damage while using a flask. 10% chance for your flask to not consume charges. So, rip. Flask charges gained. Chance to avoid. So this is all rip. 10% increased movement speed. Alright, so this is literally all new. Okay. If you are on full mana and take BM, they work, which is 10 of 10. All right, there you go then. That's right, there's like Infernal Mantle and stuff, right? Raider gets... See, the only thing that sucks is I don't know Scion, so I have to like look through every single change here. All right, Raider, 10% increased movement speed, 4% chance to dodge. You have Onslaught 1, full Frenzy charges. 10% chance to get a Frenzy charge when you hit a rare unique. Okay, that's good. This is, this is a good subclass right here. This gives you movement speed, but more importantly, you get frenzy charge generation. You have permanent frenzy charges, right? At least you should have, on a boss fight, you have permanent frenzy charges. And you have free onslaught. So that saves a flask slot, and like, just, it makes your build feel more fluid. So this is good. What did they change from Raider? Uh, Raider. Yeah, this is a new mod. Okay, cool. Fuck Frenzy Charge on kill. Th these were, like, awful before. Um, Alright, Deadeye. Deadeye gets 30% increased chance of projectiles piercing. 30% increased prod speed. Projectiles gain damage. They go further, dealing up to 50% increased damage to targets. Skills fire an additional projectile. That looks pretty okay. Um, so we get an additional 30% prod speed. 20% proj damage on this. Is this a multiplier or no? I don't think this is a, I don't know if this is a multiplier. Uh, attacks have a chance to cause bleeding. So I think overall Deadeye is just like a damage steroid. Projectiles, not attack projectiles. Did it say attack projectiles before? It doesn't say it here, but yeah, it is just projectiles. It doesn't say attacks at all. 
Which means, oh shit, you're right. Yeah, that I can be pure caster. That I can be 100% caster. Proj damage. Sorry, proj pierce. So things like spark. I don't know what other spells I use pierce on, to be completely honest. Spark. Ah. Uh, I guess EK would work. Yeah, EK, EK can use pierce. Or even if you just remove the pierce chance. Fireball. Essence Strain. I'm oh, sorry, I don't play Essence Strain either. <laughs> Again, Proj Speed. Projectiles gain damage that travel further and skills fire an additional projectile. That's like super solid for, si for uh, whatchamacallit, actually. Essence Strain. Wasn't always just projectiles? I really don't know. Um, according according to this change, it was, it was before. I don't know if they messed the warning up. It was always just projectiles. Then they pretty much just get a little bit more damage and proj speed. Okay. This proj speed is pretty nice though. I'm not going to lie. 30% increased proj speed is pretty nice. Okay. Next up is... Um, Duelist, right? Yeah. Alright, champion. 10% chance to fortify on melee hit. It was 10% uh, before. You and nearby allies have 30% increased damage while you have fortify. 5% reduced damage taken from taunted enemies. 20% chance to taunt on hit. So that was like, okay. It's just a little bit of buff every so often. So you get 6% mitigation to taunted enemies. That's like whatever. It's, I mean, you get Fortify. Like, here's the thing. You could save a link. You could save a link if you are using Fortify. Because this gives you Fortify. It's alright. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. I think when you subclass, it's okay to take, like, a main and then a sub. You know? So, like, your build would be based around this. And then you would also take this as your extra sanity. Because you get two as a Scion. So, they don't both have to be OP. You can just have one that's okay. Why is there like raining kappas in my chat on the screen when someone followed? <laughs> yeah, I'm aware of the taunted enemies do less damage, but I think taunted enemies do less damage to players other than you. But this says reduce damage taken from taunted enemies unless you do totems. All right. Slayer gives or Slayer. 50% reduced reflect physical damage taken. That's really good. F increased damage against rare and unique enemies. That's pretty good. Life Leech does not remove that full life. That is really good. Your damage hits always send enemies that are on full life. I don't care about this. This is a really good ascendancy. Vincept, what is this? Life leech effects are not removed at full life. This is like, this is like super important for sustain. So this is very good. What does Gladiator have? I don't know anything about Gladiator Sanity in general. 4% uh, block chance up from one. Your attacks have a chance to cause bleed. Uh, increase move speed if you've, for each hit you've blocked recently. There is an increased damage if you've killed a bleeding enemy recently. I think this subclass is shit. Like, on the Asc the Scion Ascendancy, I think this is shit. But I could totally be wrong. It just seems like a poo poo caca to me, so. I guess, I mean, the movement speed is nice, right? You could have, like, capped movement speed, but you could also use a, a movement skill to an extent, right? Alright, we got two more. Marauder? I don't know anything about Marauders. Chieftain, Juggernaut, and Berserker. Chieftain. Chance to ignite. Increase damage while you have a totem. Isn't this the exact same? Oh, they didn't even touch Chieftain. I mean, Chieftain's okay. It's pretty solid. 2% life regen if you have a totem. I don't know. It's like... It's okay. It's alright. 
I'm biased because I want to play RF totems uh, as a league starter. So I don't really know what to say. Nothing changed here. Juggernaut. Let's see what they do with Juggernaut. Um, Juggernaut gives increased chance to gain endurance charge when you are hit. When you are hit? <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't be chill, dude. They should just put cannot be chilled and cannot be frozen together. Like, it's such a tease to just say cannot be chilled or cannot be frozen without the other one. I don't really know what to say about uh, Juggernaut. So, uh, let's move on to Berserker. Berserker, I still... I, like, I still don't like Berserker because you take 5% increased damage to only deal 10% more damage. Unless, unless this leech is on permanently, which it's not up on bosses. So I don't, I don't like Berserker Ascendancy with Scion at all, personally. Alright, we're just gonna skip that. Pretty, pretty poo-poo. That definitely seems like the worst, though, of all the ones I've looked at. Oh, oh, what did I just do? Okay. Let's look at Guardian. 25% reduced effect of curses on you. And this is actually, honestly, really nice for mapping. Because Ellie Weakness, Vulnerability, Temporal Chains, and Feeble. Those three, those four curses. Did I say four or three? Those automatically get reduced when you're running maps, which is pretty cool. Because, like, you can't become immune to a, a map mod, for example. You and your party members share power frenzy and endurance charge with each other, so that's really good. That's conduit. You and allies affected by your auras have 10% minus 2% increased attack, cast, and movement speed. You and allies affected by your auras have block chance. You and allies affected by your auras have 10% increased attack, cast, and movement speed. Hey, 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 hey. wait a second. <laughs> I have a question here. This actually looks. This is like legit support. This is like actual support. Okay. So if you look at Duelist or Gladiator, Gladiator is 4% chance to block. I know this is really small, right? 4% chance to block. Guardian, if you run an aura, okay, you give yourself and everybody else 5% chance to block. So basically, if you were to play Gladiator and you just ran Hatred and played Guardian, you'd have more block. Your attacks have a chance to bleed. You have increased damage if you killed a bleeding enemy recently. Or you could just play a Guardian, right? And you could get 10% attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed for just running an aura, right? Because it says you and allies. So this movement speed shit, I know this can be like way higher movement speed, but you get movement speed, right? And you get reduced curse effect. Like, I feel like, I feel like Guardian is just better than Gladiator <laughs> and it's a support. You can run Gladiator Guardian. You could, you'd have nine block. I mean, it's something. Hey, just Oshi. Or just Toshi with a sub with Twitch Prime? Thank you, bro. Much appreciated, man. So Guardian subclass looks pretty fucking good, to be honest. I really like this. What does Necro give again? Let me look at Necro. Necro gives skill effect duration. You and allies, you'll increase damage when... Rip. Increase damage while affected from Auras. I don't know. Like, Necro seems pretty... I mean, unless you need the skill factoration. The 4% physical damage reduction is nice. This, remember, increased damage is getting removed. It's getting gutted with a double dip. So, um, it shouldn't be as good as people are thinking. But attack and cast, you're always going to be OP. All right. Inquisitor. Increased elemental damage, uh, let's see, take 8%, reduce elemental damage while on consecrated ground, increase critical strike chance against enemies affected by elemental ailments, 30% chance to create consecrated ground on kill. Uh, this isn't so bad, but they didn't really change anything. The problem is, this is like a consecrated ground shit. This is, this is like, this is pretty decent, like, crit. 120% crit. If you do anything with igniting, you automatically ignite. But, I don't know. I, I'd say this is on the, the worst. Unless you're using Consecrated Ground, I'd say this is kind of pretty shit. Um, Hierophant. Did they change anything with Hierophant? Skills in your helm can have up to one additional totem, some at a time. Increase maximum mana. 
Gain 10% of mana as extra ES. 50% chance to gain a power charge when you place a totem. I honestly think that Hierophant is still like one of the kings of like budget, 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 budget. 50% chance to gain a power charge when you place a totem. So that's the only thing they changed. So basically, if you play a crit totem build, you place a totem, right? Man, actually, this looks pretty crazy too, because 25% increased maximum mana, gain maximum mana as maximum energy shield. I feel like Hierophant's pretty fucking pretty good. What would Hierophant go good with? Hierophant would go good with like... Man, this music, dude, it wants me to play Hierophant. Dude, Hierophant Occultist. Because Occultist would give me 20% max ES, 1% of energy shield regen per second. Increased damage if you've killed a curse. Well, I wouldn't get these though. The maximum mana to ES doesn't scale with percent ES, so it's not as good. I mean, it's still something. It's flat ES. I feel like almost everything scales, though. Is is Hierophant just unique and it doesn't scale? Because the Guardian scales. Hiro and Chieftain. What's Chieftain get? Chance to ignite wouldn't work for me. Increase damage while you have a totem. That's good. 2% life could be 2% ES. And then gain 15% physical damage extra 5 for totems I've killed recently. That's like okay. Or if you're playing hybrid, it'd be okay. Where's Trickster? Nah. I don't know. I'd have to see. I would have to definitely look to see exactly. Because these killed recently doesn't really work with totems. Remember that. Unless you're killing with ignite or poison. But it's definitely cool. I like I like that power charge generation. That's like infinite. Makes me, makes me wonder, dude. Because the thing is with PoE is like... When you, when you spend enough currency on your character, damage isn't really an issue. Instead of damage, you want survivability and you want consistency. You want your build to feel fluid. Right? There's no point in playing like, you know, a fucking 16.18 billion, 16.18 Kappa, uh, assassin frost wall spec and it takes you 45 minutes to clear a map, but you one shot everything, you know? Oh yeah, Deadeye! Hold on, hold on. Deadeye sounds pretty cool. Where's Deadeye? That I would be in the ranger stuff here. Yes, Dead Eye would be steroids. Thirty percent chance to pierce. Thirty percent chance. Uh, let's see, prod speed. Projectiles gain damage as they travel further, and skills fire an additional projectile. No man, maybe uh, maybe freeze pulse totem. Dude, this is maybe fucking freeze pulse totems. Freeze pulse totems, Hierophant boys. <laughs> and then you put it in the helmet, so we need to get we need to get some unique helmet stuff too, because you get one additional totem. Frostbolt totems. You can do Freeze Bolt or Frost Bolt. I feel like Freeze Bolt or Freeze Pulse will be better. Alright guys, that's pretty much about it. The Pierce is useless. You can't make use of every mod though, that's the thing, all the time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think uh, your combination would be. Uh, so I'm feeling as of right now, off the top of my head, if I were to play this, I would probably do Hierophant, Deadeye, Freeze Pulse Totems. 
Um, or... Nah, I was gonna say incinerate totems, but I already fucking memed around incinerate totems too much, so... <laughs> I'm gonna catch you guys later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Dark Cow calls you gay. I'll see you boys all tomorrow. But remember, if you guys are interested, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow. I just realized I should have switched these so you could actually read the Twitch chat, but oh well.